Welcome. This is a bit of a behind the scenes video looking at the Mandalorian armor that I've been working on for a while. It's not done yet, but it's at the point where it's now wearable and I'm just kind of upgrading pieces. Like right now, I am re sewing the entire gauntlet section, but I thought I might as well share what I've got so far. There is a backstory to this. So the character is original, Verche Tan, and she's from Naboo the daughter of the funeral director who worked with Padme's funeral, as a matter of fact. And she was one of the queen's handmaidens. Until long story short, she met a Mandalorian and they fell in love. She ended up joining and taking the creed to be with the one she loved, who was then killed later by the Empire. And so during the time period of the original trilogy, she was running an underground rebel cell in the tunnels under Theed Palace. And then she started taking in Mandalorian refugees after the Night of a Thousand Tears. So by the time we get to the Mandalorian storyline, I haven't decided what's happening with her. She might not have made it. But the armor that I'm making is from the Clone Wars era. She is still fairly happy at this point doesn't know about the drama that's about to happen. As a result, you're going to see a lot of Naboo symbolism in the armor. In fact, every single detail is based on one of Amidala's or Handmaiden's outfits. I started with the design and roughly sketched out a few ideas. I went back and forth a lot. I actually did a 1.0 version of the armor that did not work out. So this is the 2 or 3.0 version. And I worked with various 3D printers who specifically focus on Mandalorian armor. I will put some links in the show notes. And they helped me bring these designs to life. The armor plates are based on Ursa Wren. But the soft parts are a combination of Django Fett. I love Django Fett's leather under armor part. And the armor from Star Wars for the little apron part, I thought that was really cool. You can also tell later the bucket is armor inspired, but I took away the Darth Maul horns because I would not have sided with him. I would have sided with Bo-Katan. It's time for more spraying. There was a lot of sanding involved and then primer and then silver, kind of making it look like Beskar. And then I used mostly toothpaste to get a lot of the weathering and then spray painted the various colors on and then damaged them more. <laughs> you can tell the earlier pieces I was still not sure how to do that. Later on I ended up using a seashell and actually digging into the armor as if it had been blasted and then carefully using a tiny brush to dot back in some of the Beskar silver and various, I had about five different silvers I was using to add that in. I think if I was going to remake the armor again, the weathering would be the part I would mostly upgrade. The attachments piece, I've gone back and forth. I ended up with a combination of Velcro and snaps, but I'm also in the process of finessing that. Here's some quick footage of where it was about a month ago. I've actually upgraded it since then. And whenever I have a fairly final version, I will share that with you. I hope you enjoyed that. This is the way. Oh, I am a Mandalorian. I know this is the way. 
With my rifle and my best car, I can always earn my pay. If you try to give me the slip in carbonite, you will stay. Cause you know I'll bring you warm or cold, it's just that kind of day.